Now I just have to see if I can't get that egg out of here somehow. You can see right here, see, right there. All right, that's the egg. I busted that one too, which is good. Not a problem. Oh my God, that is a nice bunch of eggs right there. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. We are back here at Lucy's Cage once again, peering in and I tell you what, I don't like what I'm seeing right now. See that big bulge right there? That is probably not something that I really wanted to see. That a lot of times is indicative of something that's bound up and starting to swell up because the eggs are kind of getting pushed into one area, right? So right where that bend is, there's a huge, huge bulge. Oftentimes that means that she's pushed all her eggs to one spot and that there's a blockage in there. This could not be worse news for me right now. I don't know what to do. I think the best thing to do right now is to still kind of leave her alone for a couple days. She's certainly well within the window of potentially able to be laying, but right now I'm definitely stressing out. I mean, I tell you what, I don't know what's gonna happen if something happens to Lucy. I mean, she means so much to me. I don't know what to do. This is kind of the risk that you take when you breed snakes. It's one of the reasons why I kind of didn't want to breed Daisy and I'll probably never breed Pertita because you are taking a risk. Yeah, most of the time things work out fine. And hey, even with this, it may work out fine. But right now I am definitely stressed out. There's no doubt that there could potentially be an egg binding problem, man. I tell you what, I'm gonna need all the positive vibes sent my way right now, guys. So please, in the comments, send Send me something inspirational. Make me feel better. I don't want anything to happen to Lucy. I promise every day I'll keep you guys updated. I guess it's gonna be one of those kind of days because remember my blacktail Krebo was laying yesterday and sure enough, you can tell she's egg bound. I don't know really if there's anything I can do or not. You can see the last egg is actually a couple subcaudal scales from the vent, which could mean a number of things. Could mean that she's pushed up the overduct and actually crinkled it up where basically the egg adheres to overduct and as she's pushing, the overduct basically curls up and now you can't get it out. Or she might just have ran out of energy and I can get the egg out. The idea is going to be to hopefully go in with the probe and see if I can't express that one egg. Cause sometimes if you relieve the pressure of that one egg, she she might pass the rest of the eggs. I'll be honest with you, it looks like she's got probably three eggs in her. So I'm gonna do my very best to first go in the anal vent here with this probe and see if I can just feel the egg. And I can I think I can feel it. So that's a good sign. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently massage aspirate like this, pushing the egg down this way. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, you can see I, bur I burst at the egg. That's what happened, which isn't a bad thing. This isn't a bad thing at all. Now I just have to see if I can't get that egg out of here somehow. You can see right here, see, right there. All right, that's the egg that I wanted to get out right there. Now she still has a couple more eggs in her. I'm gonna try to slowly massage, aspirate those eggs down. Now the thing is, is that I don't wanna to push too hard because again, I can fold that overduct and that's something that I don't want to have happen. So I'm just gonna really gently kind of push down and see if that next egg will get down to the vent or not. Okay, so I'm pushing down just very gently. It is absolutely moving, so that's a good thing. So again, I'm gonna go in the vent. I'm gonna see if I can't find that egg. I can feel it, oh, I busted that one too, which is good, not a problem. I can get that egg out like this, and I've got the second egg going. Now there's one more egg. It's quite a bit further up here, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it out or not. So I'm gonna try, again, I don't wanna fold that overduct. I'm just gonna slowly press and see if I can't get it down. It seems to be moving really well, so this is a good thing. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing. Sit, same thing, I think I popped that egg. See if I can't get that egg coming here. Oh, Whoa. did you see that? Just popped out the last two eggs. All right, so that is fantastic. That's exactly what we we're hoping for. I'm gonna just feel her to see if there's any eggs left in her, and she's completely void of eggs right now. So there was actually four eggs that were bound up in her. And in this case, she probably just ran out of energy and wasn't able to push them out because there was no kind of blocks, there was nothing else. Let's hope that's the case with Lucy. Let's hope that she passes the eggs. I, obviously, you see, I can't do what I did with this girl to Lucy because she would kill me, obviously. So actually, probe or massage aspirating isn't an option with her. So anyways, great news with this girl. Stinks that she didn't have a good clutch. And you can tell there's no fertility in these eggs right now. You see no red veins or any blood spots whatsoever. But regardless, we did save this girl's life because this could actually have killed her. So 
Even though I'm bummed that we didn't get a good clutch eggs, I'm very happy that she's gonna live and do fine in the future. You guys know that I wanted to spruce up a lot of the habitats here at the Reptarium. Well, my buddy is back into town. Do so I remember that brought the red-tailed green rats with the Ganeosoma? Well, he does a lot of cool terrarium builds. I mean, some of your stuff is ridiculous, dude. I love it, I always love it. And uh, by the way, I'm gonna put a link in the description to all of his stuff because he actually does this. So if you want a cool terrarium, uh, you'll see what kind of stuff we're gonna do today with the Crested Gecko display. You can reach out to him if you'd like. But the first thing we need to do is put a back drop in here which is basically this is a universal rock background that looks kind of like a banyan tree and we need to foam it in the back so that obviously the crested geckos don't get behind it and he's going to start to kind of fixture it out and make it look really cool and then eventually add plants but that's going to take a couple days right it's going to take a couple days got to wait for everything to cure and then once you get the foam to cure your silicone to cure then you can start planting and that's and when that's, it really turns into that's fun. the fun part exactly. Yeah. exactly yeah but for now we just got to get this in secure this in and then keep on moving to the next thing again i need something fun for today because it's definitely been a little bit of a challenging day. once that backdrop is in with the foam we're gonna hold this up here then we're gonna take shims and we're just gonna basically push those shims in here to secure it like that so basically that's gonna push this all the way to the edge and we'll do the exact same thing on the bottom here with the piece that secures this to the bottom just so when that foam cures it's kind of like cemented to the back and you can see there's foam all the way around that way no animals can actually get behind it because trust me we made that mistake when we first opened up the Reptarium we had all kinds of animals getting behind we learned that you have to foam it really really good or you're gonna be in trouble so we'll put one more brace along the bottom and then I'm gonna let you do your magistry and start designing Sounds good. down the dungeon again with Kelsey which means we have some python eggs what do we have spotted python spotted python we're now on the spotted python row remember we had children's python children's python children's pythons now we're on to spotted so let's go ahead and see what we've got here all right so what, the last two clutches were like 18 eggs which is pretty impressive so it is super cool and look at that female's busting out oh my god that is a nice clutch of eggs right there wow Ooh, doggy she looks oh, like she wants she, a bite of me <laughs> she doesn't look happy kelsey Oh my God, what a beautiful clutch of eggs. So it looks like one little loose egg right here that I'm just gonna bake out of there. I think the rest of the clutch looks pretty good. Oh, a couple little uh -oh. poppers. No problem at all. All right, so we'll go ahead and put those eggs in there. This egg actually, you can see, because it's a little translucent, you can actually see it's on top. And it looks like these other eggs might be the same way. Well, yeah, you don't even need to candle them. I mean, you can actually see exactly what they are. That is a beautiful clutch. Let's see how many eggs there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15? 15, okay. Well, I was thinking it was gonna be another 17 or 18 clutch, but still 15 eggs is absolutely incredible. Wow, I tell you what, Kelsey, you're killing it this year, man. You're doing such a good job. Thank you so much for all your hard work. All that effort she's put in is really paying off because we're getting some beautiful clutches. So spotted clutch number three, good job. Couple of Kluber clutches to pull today. You know I always love this. This is actually an Andery stripe that is het for scaleless. Looks like she has a really beautiful clutch. A couple sluggers in there, but still pretty good. And she was bred to this beautiful animal right there. Oh my God, that thing is absolutely stunning. I've always said that the aneurysmic, the ghost and stuff like that is my favorite of the scaleless stuff. Nevertheless, I was excited about this particular clutch because this girl is just so beautiful. I mean, take a look at her. She's that motley aneurysmic that has also got a little bit of striping in her as well. And again, it looks like we've got a couple bad eggs in here, but overall, the clutch is really good. So we'll go ahead and get Mama back in here, like we always do. We'll take her shed out, we'll get her some water and get her all settled in, and then we'll take a closer look at this clutch here. Again, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's five bad eggs in there. That's not all that good overall, but the truth is, is that it still looks like a pretty darn good clutch. We'll just remove these slug eggs really quick, get rid of these eggs right here, and it looks like we We've got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Still ten good eggs. So that's not a terrible clutch. There's ten good eggs, five slugs. So about two thirds are good, which is really good. And again, half of these will be scaleless aneries, and the other half will be aneries hat for scaleless that are all hat for both motley and stripe, unless something happens to be carrying a hidden gene in there, which is often the time. So who knows really what we're going to hatch until we hatch it? Regardless, going to get these eggs in here and move on to the next clutch. This next clutch is actually a het black motley 
het scaleless that is bred to the same and oh that is not a good clutch of eggs at all sometimes this happens it's the good and the bad it looks like there's one good egg and the rest of them all look like little sluggers for sure look at all these nasty eggs right here and again this happens now ironically enough this is our older group remember how i told you that the animals that were really close to the f1 generation which means that it's really close to the very first scalus had some fertility issues and then the other groups we have are outbred two or three times and they have no fertility issues so this is still one of the old animals here and it definitely is right up the alley of what it's usually like terrible clutch of eggs one good egg and i don't even know i don't even want to count because it'll depress me but that's it for clubers hopefully tomorrow not only we'll have more clutches but hopefully we won't have so many bad eggs like this last clutch So we basically, I think, are set as far as the big foamy type stuff. So what are you going to do next? What's up? So what we're going to do is we're going to let the foam cure. Then what you do with the foam is you take a razor blade and you kind of chip away at it. Make the surfaces rough so the silicone can actually adhere to the foam. And then you lay your substrate over the silicone. It kind of gives it that natural cliffy kind of hill look to it. And then what I'm going to do then is tip this on each side and put some more cork planters on the side. Once that cures and we get the silicone and the substrate on both sides, then we can start planting. And I got a lot more cool ideas of what kind of plants we can put in here. It's oh, that's awesome. awesome. It's definitely coming together. Again, this is kind of the rough thing. And all those planters, again, with all those plants and bromeliads and all kinds of stuff are going to look absolutely awesome. So uh, again, this is the rough part of what it's gonna look like, but trust me, when it's done, it's gonna look absolutely incredible. And as we're working on a new Crested Gecko habitat here, Jessica's actually sprucing up the blue Aziris dark frog cage. So it's looking really good. What's the plans? Well, I, it was kind of looking a little bare, so I want them to be able to move up the cage and be able to utilize the top of the cage. So yeah. I'm trying to put some plants up there. I love the bromeliad up top there. Yeah. That looks absolutely awesome. And yeah, that's the thing. These guys will climb and really use the entire vertical part of the cage too. Continue to just kind of work on habitats here. And uh, we've been saying we're gonna do it for a long time, so it's nice that we're finally doing it. Definitely cool to continue to work on the displays. It's been something that we've been talking about doing for quite some time. Lori's actually doing some touch up right now on this enclosure as well. It's just one of those things that's really difficult to do. And again, it just makes that side look much better. Before we just had foam there, which was fine, but it did have a little seam. Now that she's touching it up, it looks so much better. It's little improvements like that, that we're just excited to finally get back to at the zoo. You know, it's been so busy that it's really difficult to take the time to make these improvements. And again, it's small steps. We've got a lot of enclosures and habitats that we want to spruce up and just kind of redo to some extent, but uh, it's good to finally get started with them. And here's the finished cage that Jessica was working on by beautiful blue dart frogs. I mean, they seem to absolutely love them. And again, now they have all kinds of new area to climb, all kinds of things. They can go all the way up to that bromeliad if they want. This is an example of what we want all the habits hats to look like. But there's this fine line between making it look really cool, but also being able to see the animals. So you can see these guys are staying out right now, which is really awesome. You don't want it so planned and so crazy that, hey, no one can actually see the animals. Speaking of it, what? What are you doing up there, you crazy monkey? Again, you can see these guys love to climb. And now that they have some plants way up top there, I think that's the way he's making it. I tell you what, this is absolutely gorgeous. And over here at BHB, it's definitely starting to brighten up like a Christmas tree with all these red tags. And you know those red tags mean that those are clutches on the way. So definitely going to be an exciting year. And with all that said, I don't know. I think I'm going to just wrap it up because me and Lori have to go to a zoo to you where we take some animals. And there's no sense in bringing you guys along. You know, it's a little bit boring. But in the future, we'll bring you along maybe. Regardless, have an amazing day. I love you guys so much. Be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.